In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We are going to continue um, tonight uh, the prophecy or the sermon of the Amber Samuel, the Confessor. And tonight um, we have two important points that um, St. Samuel, the Confessor, said it. And I think this is um, mainly directed to the servants, um, a part of the servants, the priests, or the deacons, or the Sunday school servants, or the youth um, uh, servants, or any um, ministry like um, the multicultural ministry, or any type of spiritual services, and also any type of non-spiritual service. Um, and the two points that he said, he said that the people, they be looking, um, and they have the image of worship, but actually they are not true worshipers and the second one he said the church is full with many living people but with dead hearts i think the servants they are the second in charge in taking the responsibilities with the priests because they know much more better than anyone else and they are prepared for the service as well we have in each time, on each service, a pre-servants class to teach them how to serve. And of course, our role model is our Lord Jesus Christ. But the service as well has a lot of obstacles. The road is not simple. It is a very rough and tough road. That's why we need to remind ourselves from time to time why Amber Samuel, the confessor, said that. Because sometimes we look from outside very um, beautiful. People, they can praise us. People, they can talk about us. People, they can regard us highly. But from inside, is not. St. Paul, in his um, epistle to Timothy, chapter 3, verse 5, it says, having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people turn away having the form of godliness but denying its power this is exactly what's happening sometimes because i am a servant or i am a deacon or i'm doing any kind of service or i am a speaker i can use this as words to talk about it to give lessons it's easy it's all about something like I'm, I'm happy to do it and I love to do it but do we really true worshippers do we really having this form of godliness inside us or not so the advice from Saint Samuel here he is looking in the eternal life with Christ your heart from inside connected to the Lord or not in your private room it's exactly like um, a monk or a nun in the cell what they are doing so we usually come to the service to do some public service but what's happening in my private life do we really are honest and faithful do we take from the source christ or not so um we need to work on, on this part many people have neglected you can find a deacon he doesn't pray at all but he's very good in hymns you can find Sunday school um, servant he's brilliant in delivering the message but he doesn't take <laughs> hold his igbeya at all or even the bible some people they can deliver things in form of education or teaching but not in form of a spiritual so what we is in need now is to have really a true personal life with Christ a true personal life with Christ and by doing this you will, will be a true worshiper when we worship Christ in the spirit and truth in the story between our Lord Jesus Christ and the Samaritan woman when um, the Samaritan woman was talking to him about worshiping in this mountain or in Jerusalem um, and he said to her the true worshipers um, will, will be worshipping God in the spirit and truth and it's not about the location 
in this mountain or in that mountain. So sometimes as servants we stick to certain locations in our services. Sometimes we, we are so keen about certain things. But actually, the true worship is when you focus in the Lord himself, in the spirit and the truth. And this is very essential for our servants to have. So wherever I am, I'll be serving. I'll be serving myself. And I'll be serving those people around me from my family. I'll be serving my relatives. And even I'll serve my friends. And now I'll be serving the whole world. And now we have a responsibility. You have a role now through the pandemics that we have here in the world. What did you do for this? And think about that. Maybe now we can pray because we organize prayer meetings and some masses here and there. But do you usually pray before coronavirus? Did you usually pray on a regular basis? Did you have really a personal relationship in worshiping him truly and in truth and in spirit or not? Or what's happening after we finish this period? We are going to stop or we are going to be busy again. So it's really important for you to take the responsibility. You are sharing the responsibility of the church fathers. You are the, the people who are praying and offer praises and glorification and worship. So we need to be true worshipers. It's not about image and it's not about location. It's everywhere I go, I worship you, Lord, in the spirit and the truth. And this is a responsibility for the servants. The second part, which is like really important here, as I said, the image, the self-image. One of the attacks, um, again, is the servants all the time. We can ask the disciples, how did you feel when you were with the Lord? Because they had such a great attention. And very um, a nice story, um, it shows the evidence that you'll be attacked with it when the, um, the two sons of Zebedee ask the Lord to be one on the right and one in the left. And then they ask their mom as well because their mom was the auntie of our Lord Jesus Christ. So they requested from their mom and then they continued requesting this from our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I hear from the Gospel of St. Matthew when their mom um, requested from um, uh, the Lord. It says, then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to him with her sons kneeling down, asking something from him. He said to her, what do you wish? She, she said to him, grant that these two sons of mine may sit, one in your right hand and the other on the left in your kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, you don't know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. And they said to, uh, to, to him, we are able. So he said to them, you will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on the left is not mine to give. But it is for those to whom it is prepared by my father. And when the ten heard it, they were greatly displeased with the two brothers. But Jesus called them to himself and said, you know, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. This is a great lesson. The disciples were around the Lord, and everyone was fighting to be in the right on the left. Why the right on the left? Because this is the place of glory. But they were not talking about the place of glory. They wanted that glory for themselves. They're looking for the earthly glory. But the Lord, he said, you, are not, you don't know 
you have no idea what you are asking about. You are asking for something so big and the, the price is so um, huge. And the price he was talking about is the cross. And the baptism is the baptism of the blood from the cross. It's very, very tough. That's why servants should not be seeking glory or honor. Servants should not be seeking rights. Servants should not be looking at the image that the, everyone's saying he is a servant here and there or what he has done or his achievements. It needs a great humility. Maybe God wasn't happy with us because we looked into ourselves and, and instead of giving him the glory, we have stolen this glory to us. We became thieves like by stealing the glory of God to ourselves and not to give it to him. And then he said, like, you know, how are you going to do that? Basically, you should be a servant. And the one who will be last will become first. But if you'd like to be first, you become last. There is always, like, you know, um, a quote, it says, respect and honor should be earned. This is what the <laughs> secular society, they say. Do the work so you can earn it. But in Christian sense, we have the opposite. I have to escape from the honor. And once I escape from the honor, the honor will follow and will come to me. And this is that quote by St. Isaac the Syrian. Pope Carolus loved it so much. And he applied it to all his life, to have this in his life. And he, he applied it to the point that he was so upset and he was in tears when he was appointed as a Pope. Why? Because he knows with it there's a great honor and glory and he didn't want that. So as servants, if you liked now to redirect yourself, we need to think about that. I shouldn't be seeking any kind of glory or rights. I shouldn't be seeking any honor. Even I have a lot of things like you know, I have done, a lot of achievements I have done, I shouldn't be doing that simply because I need to take that lesson from the Lord. Enough for you to be around our Lord Jesus Christ. And guess what happened when the two um, uh, sons um, uh, requested that? The other ten started to fight and to reply. How come they asking for this? So by seeking the honor and glory, you will make a division amongst your other uh, servants. You will make like people to judge you and even if you don't say it, they will be inside them as well. So we need to humble ourselves and we need to seek that kind of humility and take the Lord. And also, if you need actually the glory and it's a desire for everyone to be glorified with the Lord, your way, your road is the cross. You don't have anyone, any way, any means will be taking you to the honor and glory except the cross, which means the cross, I have to endure tribulations. The cross, I have to be accused and be silent. The cross, I have to be sworn at and I'll never, I'll consider this as a blessing in my life. So servants, they should look at that and they get so happy, never be upset, never complain. I did learn this and in my spiritual life that I complaining is a problem for the servant. Complaining about things happening is something negative and we need to stop doing things. But I have to accept all things from the Lord happily. And I know that it counts for me a joy to endure all of this. So servant, they should have that in their lives, that path, it's a spiritual path. Unlike the secular life, when they do a lot of wrong things and they make people, they ask for, for honor and glory and for respect and, and you have to earn that. But actually, in a Christian life, we are the opposite. The other thing as well, as you see, the, the sons of Zebedee, they were actually related to our Lord Jesus Christ. But the Lord didn't allow this to happen, to give them something like from that. It has to be by how they're going to carry the cross in their lives. And that's the, the thing. Not because they, are, they were related to him, he will give it to them. And also, 
Those people, they were so close to the Lord. They were so close to the Lord. They were with him in many uh, times, more than other disciples. But now they had the sense of possessions, the ownership we need, we have the right. I am with you and I went with you more than those people and I served you so I deserve them. Those people when they earn the service, it is a problem. It is really a problem when I earn the service. The service is not ours, it is not mine, but that's God's service. And when he allows me to serve or become a co-worker with him, I'll get and I'll receive many blessings in my life, things that I do believe. Um, uh, um, and there are many promises about that. It's enough for me to uh, see these promises in heaven, but not on earth. So I need to get out of this, and I need to understand that um, it is great privilege for me to be serving with him. What a great honor to be serving with the Lord. But when I earn the service, when I possess it, when I think about my rights, this is when I, I, get, I got it wrong. The other thing that St. Samuel said, he said, the church is filled with many living people, but with dead hearts. The heart of the servant is really, really important um, um, to, to direct things. As you are aware, as servants, we shape our children with the virtues that we have or with the weaknesses that we have. So if the servant is meek, the kids will be meek. If the servant is humble, the, servants, the kids will be humble. If the servant is forgiving, the kids will be forgiving. If the servant is loving, the kids will be loving. So we will have the responsibility to shape people around us in any service, spiritual and non-spiritual, those people they serve around, when they see a person, they learn from him. And they, they deal with him according to his level of the virtue. And they would like to reach that. Our responsibility is great, is to teach them how to love God from their hearts. This is what Abu Nabshu Kamil said. Your role, actually, is to show everyone around you, the kids in Sunday school, the youth and youth meeting, um, any other services, spiritual, non-spiritual, how do you love God? And once you show that, many people, they love God as well. But the heart here is really, really important for them um, to, to see that. It says in St. Paul in, in the Epistle of Second Timothy, chapter two, verse twenty-one, says, "Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the uh, latter, later he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work." So, cleansing the heart is really important. Will you be so useful for the master to use you for every good work? But if your heart is dead, not caring, not living not beating with the love of God, not working with him, not shining, then how you are going to offer your heart to the Lord to be useful for him? So the master is waiting for you to cleanse your heart, to make heart and beating with his love and caring. The most important thing about this is the caring, is the care for the service. Many servants, they think the service is too much for them, they cut the service, or they step down, or I'm not free, I have my family first, or my business. Many people, they give up on God simply because of their own sakes. Or other people, they continue in the service but not caring about the kids, not caring about those people who are around, not caring about um, the service. That's really, really very tough in our days. And we have seen a lot about this. Do you think God will bless or offer the blessings? Actually, we prevent ourselves from these blessings. And we need, we need to work hard to make our hearts living again, to have life in your hearts. And the most important thing is the care for the service. 
And one of the important um, uh, ways as well is to make other servants as well for you, sharing you know, the service with others, teaching others how to serve, making more servants for the Lord. What a great privilege. Can you see like all the disciples, when they received the Holy Spirit, they went everywhere and everyone had disciples and people served with them and everyone went here and there. I remember um, uh, Abu Nabshri Kamil, when he had many disciples, till now, I would say to you, it didn't serve St. George's Sporting in Alexandria, but it did serve the world. Now it is your role. I remember um, Pope Shenouda, he gave me one advice before I came here. He said to me, I would like you to take the role model of St. Paul. St. Paul was one person, but he made such a great effect and a change in the whole world. So it's really important. What did you do? Did you have the heart to change the whole world around you or the whole church around you? Or you made that heart is dead so people can see darkness in your heart. So it's a time for us is to cleanse our hearts and to start to care about our services and to take the responsibility and not only um, for myself or my family, but also for the church but now for the whole world. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. And the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to stand before you. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us this privilege to be co-workers with you in the service. You made us to share with you this blessed service. And we ask you, Lord, to make us faithful servants to you, Servants, they seek you through our inner life and, and our home in private life. How to be true worshippers to you. We seek hmm, humility exactly like you. And the road is the cross. And also, Lord, we need a heart is beating with your love and with the faith that hmm, we have been granted. So we'll be able to care for all people around us and now for the whole world. We we'll ask you, Lord, to bless this parish and every parish, to bless the fathers, to bless the servants. And we ask you, Lord, to heal all those people that have been infected with the coronavirus and also all those people that are in pain or, or they endure any kind of tribulations or adverses. We we'll ask you, Lord, to be with them and support them through the intercession of them, St. Mary, Archangel Michael, St. Mark, St. George, St. Abisphane, St. Abinab, St. Damiana, Pope Kroll is the first, Pope Kroll is the sixth, Pope Shun the third, Abu Nabshri Kamil and Abu Namkhir Ibrahim. Hear us when we pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thou be done on earth as is heaven. Give us the day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as forgive those trespassing against us. Lead us from temptation, but deliver us from evil.